and uh, we're joined with um, Richard Taylor, who is a five times Academy Award winning co-founder and co-director of the Weta Companies in Weta, uh, Wellington, New Zealand. Uh, Richard Taylor has won five Oscars and four BAFTAs and numerous other awards. I'm sure his trophy shelf is very full. Uh, and also right next to him is Daniel uh, Falconer. Uh, he's been with Weta Workshop since 1996. He was instrumental in the conceptual designs and created many of the iconic costumes, weapons, and props uh, for the characters as seen in The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. And he has a deep knowledge of Tolkien's Middle Earth and is just an amazing designer. And last but not least is Peter Lyon. Uh, he's an amazing swordsmith and armorer and first began uh, producing swords in 1985. So Peter specializes in replicating European medieval swords for uh, collectors and uh, he joined Weta back in 1998 and um, he was the senior swordsmith for the Lord of the Rings. His extraordinary craftsmanship can be seen on the, for the hero weapons in movies like Chronicles of Narnia, Last Samurai, and The Lord of the Rings. And I'm sure many of you uh, fans of Reclaiming the Blade are already familiar with these guys. We're fans of, obviously, the movies I just mentioned. And so let's jump in with uh, a fan question. So before we carry on, I'll just, I just share a little, uh, a little uh, thing that happened this morning between yeah. Pete and I. Pete, Pete said to me, oh, come and have a look at this. I've just been cleaning out my office. And he yeah. showed me a handwritten paper sheet out of his Filofax, yeah. which read uh, handwritten yeah. in, what, 14, 15 years ago. Yeah. Have you got it there? Yeah. Oh, my oh, gosh. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, a little, 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 little piece of history there. So, so this, it, it looks terribly ironic now. And it <laughs> reads, this is... Uh, this is in, what, 1992. Richard Taylor, care of Film Studios, corner Camperdown and Wicker Streets. Known him since 1992. Interested in my work and may get some film work through him. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That is so cool. I, I oh. doubt that there's many sword makers in the world today that have worked, what, solidly for 14 years making yep. swords? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. Wow. Well, that actually leads to the next question because um, one of the fans wanted to know, Peter, do you do much sword making like on your own time, not just for work, but on your own? Um, these days, uh, I'm still quite busy, whether I'm working on film work or collectible swords, and, and what I'm finding is that it's actually harder and harder to uh, service my own clients' needs. I've actually got one client that I've been working on their sword for a couple of years now, and slowly getting towards completion, but um, yeah, as I get older, it's a little bit harder to get home at the end of a day making swords and look at making more swords. <laughs> Pete, Peter is a uh, very, very focused individual, as those of you that have followed his career will appreciate. And to make a sword uh, is, not, uh, is not a thing that you make lightly. It requires intense level of concentration. You're trying to, you know, as you can see here, yeah, that's you're a beautiful to, weapon, by the way. Yeah, mm. you're trying to tolerance the edge of the blade to such extreme levels of accuracy. So yeah. should you run a caliper down it, it's a, yeah. it's absolutely mm. perfect. And of course, that's all been done by hand. Yeah. That requires a uh, a, a mm. mental focus. Mm -hmm. uh, so even though Peter may not be running around the workshop madly building large objects, when I catch up with him at the end of the day. It's a it's a state of absolute mental exhaustion mm. from focusing that intensely all day, and therefore the ability to actually build more stuff into the evening would mm. be very very challenging. I would think. Yeah. yeah. I believe Maybe it. When I <laughs> yes. From the design perspective, do you get the opportunity to ever visit museums and handle real historical weapons? Not generally. Um, I mean, I take those opportunities when they when they uh, when they come along. Certainly to visit museums and such like. Um, but uh, being at the bottom end of the world, um, we uh, we don't have a huge uh, trove of uh, authentic, um, you know, medieval or historic weaponry in our yeah, museums. None. So, <laughs> and the opportunity to go and handle them would be would be extraordinary. Um, yeah. But you know, I mean, we have you know 
the benefit of people like Peter and, and certainly on Lord of the Rings where John Howe as well, you know, people with a deep knowledge of this material who we uh, have right here in our workshop and, and so that we uh, avail ourselves of, of their skills and their knowledge when, wherever possible. But the internet is also an amazing tool nowadays and, and uh, you know, we certainly hit the books first and foremost whenever we embark on a new design project. So uh, yeah, I guess the answer is not as much as I would like. Interestingly, but. you're filming us this way. Yeah. Our television is actually mm. sitting in our research library and mm. yeah. in front yeah. of us here are hundreds of mm. books mm. on uh, research, historical research, a lot of them on swords wow. and armor. Those behind the scenes videos, I can't, I can't stress that enough. I'm glad Richard brought that up. It really has inspired a lot of people. And, um, Me. you know, yeah, go ahead. I mean, really, you have no idea. You have no idea. And I think it's, it's really the first time a film has been documented to such a degree and so in intensely and with such passion um, that it inspires people not only that want to perhaps get into filmmaking, but as you were saying, just the arts in general and, cra and making things. Um, and I know, I know you've got a lot of feedback on that. So, And to that end, I, I, I've just been doing the behind-the-scenes interviews again for The Hobbit. And right, and we look well, forward to seeing those. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I was stressing to the gentleman that makes these things, uh -huh. Michael Pellerin, that he himself needs to present himself to the fan base at Comic-Con at some <laughs> point because... He is a filmmaker in his own right. He is the person that facilitated, along with his team, yeah. this incredible body of work. Obviously, yeah. the behind the scenes has the leading light of Peter's inspiration and desire to see it happen. Yeah. But Michael... Uh, is he's the, telling that story. He is telling that story, and he's yet to be celebrated for it. And I, I, I think Michael really has no true understanding of how important his body of work has been to a vast number of people. To see this complete amazing interview, please head over to our Kickstarter page and become a backer for as little as $1 and gain access to this full 40-minute video, plus a 60-minute interview with Lord of the Rings star John Rhys-Davies.